Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with one of my update talks. You know, as of this moment, we've done about 330 videos, I think, just about maybe a few more, a few less. And it's always important, I think, to go back based on your comments and based on stupid mistakes that I've made and check out what I said and what I recommended and what I missed and what I overlooked or forgot about or got wrong or things that you suggested that I listened to and catch up. So we're going to catch up with some talks that we did and just run through a big pile, well, a big pile, I don't know, this pile of CDs and we'll see where it takes us. The first thing we're going to talk about is the Brahms Symphony Cycle Chat. Now, as you know, there are so many Brahms Symphony Cycles. There are more Brahms Symphony Cycles than there are like stars in the sky. I mean, they're just all over the place. And a lot of them are very, very good. And there was no way that I could mention all of them. One of the ones, for example, that you mentioned that I agree is excellent was the, the Yanofsky Pittsburgh Symphony on Pentatone, but it was terribly expensive. I mean, it really is. You want to spend 60 bucks when you can get fabulous Brahms symphonies for less than 20? I mean, you know, things like that. There are all kinds of considerations. Availability is another. But one Brahms cycle that everybody agrees is terrific that I was not able to mention. Well, I mentioned it, but I wasn't able to like wave it around and show it to you. So now I can because I went and got it. Um, was this one, Kurt Sandling on Eurodisc. I mean, this was always one of the great Brahms cycles. Everybody always thought so, but um, it's hard to find. It was always hard to find. It's with the Staatskapelle Dresden. That's the wonderful thing about it, too. It's a very serious kind of Klemperer-like approach to the music. And a bunch of you said, you forgot Sanderling. Well, I didn't forget him. I did mention him, but I hadn't, didn't have my box handy. So now I have my box. I got it from the overflow room and we're in business. So Kurt Sanderling's Brahms Symphony Cycle, if you can find it, it still has real avail availability issues. I wasn't looking for it. You can find it used. Maybe it's available as a, as a download. I don't know, but it's a great Brahms Cycle. It really is. Next, we had a, I thought, a very interesting chat, a back and forth in the comments about the Dvorak Wind Serenade, a piece that everybody loves that's been recorded many, many, many times. And one of the things I wanted to mention, there's somebody said something about the, the Netherlands Wind Ensemble hadn't done it. Of course they did. They did it. And it's in their greatest hits, Philips 2 CD set, which is also long out of print. But I have that. I didn't bring it with me, but it's there. And trust me, it's got the Dvorak Wind Serenade. So, you know, and, and, and rumor has it that there will be a Netherlands Wind Ensemble big box coming hopefully from Eloquence next year. So just hang in there, guys. Your Netherlands Wind Ensemble cavalry should be charging up the hill, or at least let's hope. But there are a couple other versions that I wanted to mention because you brought them up and or didn't. This one nobody brought up, but I wanted to talk about it because it's fantastic and I didn't mention it. Here you are. It's on Orfeo. Not a lot of playing time. Also out of print. Hard to find. But it's with the the Munch the Münchner Blazer Academy, uh, the Munich Wind Academy under Alexander Brezina. And boy, is this a hot, smoking, fabulous with a gorgeous, gorgeous slow movement, particularly. But the other thing that's so nice about this is that it comes with the the Guno Petite Symphony for winds, which is a lovely, lovely little work for winds that, that seems not to get any play or attention at all anymore. You know, charm is in such, such short supply these days since everybody started listening to Bruckner. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to break it to you, all you Bruckner people, but all the, 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 the these, these heavy duty, heavy duty symphonies. We don't seem to have time for, for things that are just there for pleasure or for amusement, but that that are just supremely well written, things of incredibly high quality, wonderful, wonderful music, and it's just there to please. And I like being pleased. I'm into I'm into pleasing. Pleasure is a good thing. It really is. I mean, it's really a good thing when you can get the little bookie thing here back in the town. Heck with it. I'll do it later. All right. Now 
Also, a Dvorak disc that you mentioned um, that I had, and I hadn't listened to at the time that you mentioned it, was the Hans Schmidt Isserstedt Dvorak Wind Serenade. One of you pointed out that, yeah, the first movement's very lively, and it is. The first three movements are lively, but the finale is dead. Oh my God, it just dies. So I can't recommend that. The string serenade that comes with it is pretty good, but the Seventh Symphony is horrible. <laughs> it's really bad. It's really badly recorded. The balances are all off. The strings are 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 way too forward. The winds are are don't come out where they should, and the brass might as well not even be there. The brass and timpani. It's a very. I mean, it, had it been well recorded, I think we would have thought it's a good work a day straight ahead performance. But as it is, I think it's virtually unlistenable. Also, he did a bunch of four Slavonic dances. They're just as bad. I mean, the sound is lousy. And, you know, things like the cymbals come and go. I mean, you know, you don't even hear them. You don't even know they're there. But on the other hand, he did seven Brahms Hungarian dances. Ah, Brahms. Beautiful. Fabulous. Fabulous. So you, if you want a, a decent string serenade, some... Pretty good, uh, very good Brahms Hungarian dances, a horrible Dvorak seventh, four loathsome Slavonic dances, and a wind serenade with a really dull finale. Knock yourself out. I wish I could say I loved it because I, I respect Schmidt Isserstedt as an artist, but these were just radio broadcast things that never should have been released. I mean, they never needed to be released. And that's just the way it is. Now, you may recall we were talking about Berlioz's Les Nuits d'été and Ravel Scheherazade as a coupling, and I told you that my very, very favorite Ravel Scheherazade was Elie Ameling's with the San Francisco Symphony and Edo de Vart, which is just fabulous. And one of you mentioned, well, what do you think of Robert Shaw? Well, here it is. Elie Ameling with Robert Shaw doing Les Nuits d'été, and it's absolutely wonderful. It's wonderful because it's Ellie Amelig and she's one of the great leader singers that ever lived and she sings with that typical, typical simplicity and elegance that characterizes everything she does. And Shaw accompanies beautifully. He's very good in that. You also get a uh, Foray's Paleas and Melis on the coupling. It's not a lot. I mean, does it tell you how long this thing is? It's not a lot of minutes. Uh, they're smart. They don't tell you how long the disc is. Um, it's not a very long disc. It's also not in print, I don't think, but you may be able to find it. I, it may not be too difficult. Next, Albanus, Iberia. Remember that? We did a whole thing on Iberia, on the piano version and the orchestral versions and whatnot. And one of you told me, one of you told me that I just had to hear the orchestration by, by Francisco Guerrero. Francisco Guerrero, who did who did, let's see, one, two, the six of these suckers. Only two of the ones that Arbos did. Um, that's that's the Corpus Christi and El Albaicin. The others, I think, were all done by Surinach. And and so it's his own arrangement of six of the numbers. And and the commentator pointed out that the orchestration was far more effective and idiomatic. I disagree. I have to tell you, I listened to this. Here it is. I got it. I listened to it on your suggestion. I didn't know it. It's on Glossa. Um, it's extremely well recorded. But I have to say, I find the orchestration to be somewhat, somewhat bony and more contemporary. I think, I think Arbos gets, gets a bad, a bad rap because whatever he, although he wasn't Ravel and whatever he lacked in, you know, sort of imaginative daring, he, he is of the period that Albanus was. So he scores like music of that period. That is rich, luscious, late romantic orchestration. And I think that suits the music. I really do. I think these more modern ones, I mean, the Surinach I put up with, with Arbos, because then you get the whole piece. Now, these orchestrations are not bad. They really aren't. And, and the Corpus Christi does have a, Christi does have a fabulous tam-tam. I mean, the performance here is with uh, let's see. Oh, it's in teeny, teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny print. The Orquesta Sinfonica de la Galicia under Jose Ramon Encinar. Or Encinar. Here's the problem. The performance is just so friggin' slow. You know, I mean, I mean, these pieces are like, 
it's incredible. They're, they run, generally speaking, on this disc about two to three minutes slower than the piano originals. Now, obviously, when you do a, a big organ orchestration for a large orchestra, you know, of, 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 you know, a piano original, solo piano playing tends to be quicker because there's only one person and you can go quicker and the sound is lighter and it's, there's less inertia in getting the thing moving. I mean, speeds tend to be a little zippier in the solo realm than in the orchestration realm, but there's no excuse for playing the music this slowly. It's just dull. I'm sorry, but it's dull. And because of that, it's very, very hard to, to develop, I think, a fair estimate of just how effective the orchestration would be because I could well see um, the orchestration sounding much better if the conducting were up to tempo. You know, it's possible. <laughs> so uh, I, 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 I reserve judgment on this, on this version by Francisco Guerrero of Iberia. Also, speaking, we're going to stay in Spain for a little bit. Uh, we talked about Ernesto Haufter's amazing, amazing Sinfonietta. And one of you had asked me about, about this version. It's this one here with the Philharmonia Virtuosi under Richard Kapp. Richard Kapp was a lovely man. I knew him well. He was a wonderful guy. He was very supportive of ClassicsToday.com when we first got started. It was a pleasure to listen to his recordings. Most of them were live. Some of them had issues because they were live, but a lot of them were excellent. This is a very nice sounding recording, and you'd get the guitar concerto with Elliot Fisk, Halfter's guitar concerto, which is lovely too. So that's a considerable bonus. The only issue with this performance, which I said in the comments was a very good one, is the really crazy fast tempo for the minuet. Some of you may like it. I mean, it should go chunk, 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 dum, ba, da, 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 and he's like, chuck, 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 do, 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 which is a legitimate minuet tempo. It's an allegro minuet. So he's not wrong, but I prefer the more stately, courtly kind of, I don't know, somehow that sounds more sort of, you know, 18th century Spanish when you take it a little slower and it has a little bit more aristocratic dignity. But in other respects, it's a wonderful performance, beautifully played, very nicely recorded. Also, we talked about Ataulfo Argenta. I went back and pulled out this thing. This is just the Sinfonietta, very, very short playing time, but it does exist. You could order it. It's available and um, it sounds fine. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful performance. It's with the, the let's see, uh, the, Orquesta Nacional de España, which is like, you know, the big orchestra in España, or it was in the, in the 50s when this was recorded. You know, one of the issues with this one was that, as you pointed out, it's available in, in the Scribendum box of Argenta. And of course, if you're an Argenta fan, and I like Argenta, I have the, the box. So I have this there too. But I think most of you who are just looking for Halfter Sinfonietta do not want to have 20 or 30 discs of miscellaneous stuff by Argenta, however good it may be. And a lot of it really is very, very good. So, so I'm letting you know, this is around. You can probably find it. And finally, last but not least, we did way back, way, way back. I don't know which was back when we were only in the hundreds, <laughs> you know, doing these things. We talked about Hindemith's Magister Mahler. And some of you mentioned that I had omitted to discuss Savalish with Philadelphia. And I said, yes, it's excellent. But I already had an, you know, as is always the case with these things. You know, I mean, there are so many of them. And I try and pull out the ones. I mean, again, this is, I think, out of print now. I think almost everything Savalish did in Philadelphia is out of print. You know, I, I want to try and find things that you'll have... Uh, not too hard a time sourcing, but I'm about ready to give up on that, frankly, because because things are such a mess. I, I don't personally, as you know, deal with digital downloads so much, although I, I subscribe to Spotify and I, I look around. So I know some of this stuff is out there, but you know, I see it on Amazon, something like this. It's like they show it's available for $937.62. And I'm thinking to myself, why in God's name, do they want the 62 cents if they're going to charge $937 for a $10 disc? 
It's crazy. It's just crazy. So I'm I'm starting to weaken and not worry so much about availability. But I, I do. I, I do. I, I, I don't want you to be frustrated when you're looking for things. I want you to be able to find the music that we talk about and able to listen to it for yourself without too much effort. I mean, it's going to be an effort. It just is. That's the nature of the beast today. But so I do recommend this, this Savalish disc. It's excellent. It is absolutely excellent. It's, it's the Symphonic Metamorphosis, Nobilissima Visione, and Matis der Mahler. And they are excellent performances. Absolutely first class. One of the best things that Savalish did in Philadelphia. And that's the chat. That's the chat, folks. I just wanted to give you this this quick update so that we can all we can all move on from here, happy and content in all of the wonderful things we have to keep on listening. So take care, folks. All the best. <laughs>